Hi, I'm Amy. Thank you for tuning in. I decided to do my second ever reading vlog um, because my publisher asked me if I would like to go this weekend um, to the Whitby Bookshop to do a signing and I said of course because I love Whitby and it has a really close connection to my book because Mina and her family are from there um, and Mina is named after the main character in Dracula which obviously has really strong ties to Whitby so I thought I'm going to be able to go, I have lots of fun in all the spooky locations, take some photographs probably of my book um, and do the event as well. So while I was there I'd been watching um, How to Train Your Gavin and um, Gav was talking about um, how he went to Whitby and he read Dracula when he was there for a few days and I thought it'd be a great idea to read um, a vampire book and I've decided to read this one because Carmilla is the book that inspired Dracula, I don't know if you can see because it's so shiny, I love this cover, um, is the book that inspired Dracula, it is apparently a sapphic vampire book um, it sounds really good and it's been on my TBR pal for ages and I thought because it's so short I might be able to read it for a couple of days while I'm in Whitby and in the surrounding area. So I'll keep you updated during the course of this vlog um, on my reading progress. I'm also going to be doing a couple of other events this weekend. I've got the No Limits Festival um, which has been put on by the Rabbit Hole Bookshop and lots of other local people um, at Norman B. Hall which will be really exciting and I'm also going to my first in-person book club um, where people have read my book so that'll be really exciting. I don't know a lot about Camilla um, going into it apart from what I've said so I'm really looking forward to reading this one every short period of time. I'm also going to be reading with my friend Melina um, who is She Gathered Books on Twitter if you want to look her up um, so it'll be nice to be able to bounce um, our thoughts off each other um, and see what Melina thinks as well. So in my next update, I'll tell you um, how I'm getting on with the events um, when I'm on the road. So I'm just about to do my first ever workshop as an author at the gorgeous Normanby Hall as part of No Limits Festival. Really excited, a little bit nervous, so I'm going to be talking to people about my journey from blogger to author, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it will go and I'll give you a little update later in the day. I'm outside Great Bookshop after just doing a lovely YA book club there where a group of people read my book and it was so much fun talking to them about it. As you can see I'm carrying toddler which is just what my real life is like. Um, to be able to record this I just had to have a little person with me. Um, I've had a really fun day, I did No Limits Festival earlier where I did a workshop talking about going from blogger to author um, so I just thought I'd give you a quick update to say I've had a brilliant day, I'm going to be heading to Whitby tomorrow so I'll be able to catch you up then. It's Saturday afternoon, early evening in my hotel room and I've just had a brilliant day so I thought I'd do a quick update. Um, I did a workshop at No Limits Festival this morning um, with a lovely group of people who are interested in my journey um, from blogger to author. It's the first time I've done a workshop like that um, as an author so it was really fun. And um, Then later on in the day I went to the lovely Drake the bookshop um, and joined in their book club um, who've been reading Mean and the Undead this month. So that was another new experience, it was really nice to talk to people who'd just finished reading my book um, and luckily who'd all enjoyed it, that would have been an interesting conversation if they hadn't, um, maybe I could have taken it. 
Um, an exciting update, I found um, an early copy of The Lighthouse by Alex Bell. Um, it's a red eye book, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, and I loved Alex Bell's books, um, Charlotte Says and Frozen Charlotte in that series. So I'm really excited to have this early copy of the new book. I think it comes out in October, but Drake had some early ones. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to be heading to Whitby and I'm um, going to take Mina with me um, because it's the first time I've been to Whitby since the books came out. And for anyone who didn't know, um, Mina, the main character of Mina and the Undead and Mina and the Slayers, is from Whitby. Um, so I thought it would be really fun to take some pictures, visit the Abbey that I reference in the book, climb up the steps. I think I reference the Abbey in the book anyway. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll reference that in a future one if I haven't. Um, also, while I was in this area, I decided that I was going to finally pick up Carmilla. Um, I liked the idea of um, reading something to vampires while I'm in Whitby. This is a nice short vampire book. I'm reading it with my friend Melina. Um, she gathered books on Twitter who was very kind to agree to read it in such a short time frame this weekend because I thought, well, it is a way. It'd be fun to do a reading vlog. Um, so update so far, I've read about 50 pages and I'm just amazed at how into it I am. Um, I didn't know what the writing style would be like because for me, um, with classic fiction, if it's not an accessible writing style, I think that puts me off. Um, and that's why I like Dracula so much because I think it's generally so readable. And this one, I think it's possibly even more readable not just because of the length, um, but just because the writing style. I've not read anything else by Sheridan Le Fanu. Don't know much about him, um, but I think I'm going to investigate more after having read a bit of this book. The writing style is just immediately gripping. It is so gothic and atmospheric. Um, and I can see, it says on the front, that this is the cult classic that inspired Dracula. And I can definitely see the seeds of Dracula in the setting, in some of the descriptions, um, even in some of the tropes um, that are starting to come to light. Um, I'm at the point where... We um we met Car Carmilla, and I want to call Camilla for some reason. We've met Carmilla. Um, she is staying with um a father and his daughter who is a similar age, and the daughter is having all kinds of feelings for Carmilla, a lot of which she doesn't understand. So I knew it was going to be sapphic. I'm not sure how sapphic it's going to be. Whether it's going to stay as feelings, possibly because of the time period in which it was written, or whether anything will develop between the characters. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I think it's great. I think the characters are good and um, the atmosphere is good. And I think I really enjoy this one and hopefully finish it later today. So I'll update you from Whitby um, about what I've been getting up to. I should also probably mention that I'm going to be signing at the Whitby bookshop. So by the time this vlog is all put together, you'll be able to see that as well. So I will update you shortly. So I'm just about to go into the Whitby bookshop to do my signing, really looking forward to it. Um, I've just had a quick look and there's loads of gorgeous Dracula books, so I'm sure I'm probably going to buy something as well. So I'll update you later when I finish.
So I'm just going to do a quick update um, here from Whitby Abbey um, to let you know about the next part of Carmilla. Um, I'm still really enjoying how the story's progressing. I'm going to talk carefully because I don't want to spoil it. Um, but some interesting things are happening in the dynamics between Carmilla and the main character. Um, the main character, um, her character journey is not going in a direction I expected, so that's really interesting. And I'm just loving seeing the commonalities between it and Dracula. So again, without spoilers, um, it's interesting how there are a couple of plot points that are quite similar, a couple of characters that are quite similar. So far, I think I prefer Dracula just because I've seen the whole arc of the story, but I'll be interested to know by the end which one I prefer. So I'll do another update later and I'll have some B-roll of um, us looking around Whitby Abbey as well. Bram Stoker visited Whitby with his family in August 1890, when in the local library he found a book that mentioned the historical figure Vlad Tepes or Count Dracula. Stoker was already working on a novel about a vampire. He took inspiration from the landmarks of Whitby as well as the figure of Dracula and included them in his book. Count Dracula arrives in Whitby on a stricken ship called the Demeter, which runs into a sandbank during a terrible storm. To observers, the Demeter appears to hold only the body of its captain, several boxes of earth, and a huge dog which runs into the town and is never seen again. The waves rose in growing fury, then without warning, the tempest broke. Till in a very few minutes, the lately glassy sea was like a roaring and devouring monster. The very instant the shore was touched, an immense dog sprang up on deck, making straight for the steep cliff where the churchyard hangs over the laneway to the east pier. 1st of August Holidaymakers Lucy and Mina spend most of their time enjoying the fresh air, walking along the cliff tops to Robin Hood's Bay and reading and observing the town from their favourite bench in the churchyard. Here they meet Swales, an elderly Whitby man who shares local legends and folklore. 11th of August. Best friends Lucy Westerer and Mina Murray are holidaying in Whitby when Dracula lands. Around this time, Lucy starts sleepwalking, which concerns Mina and leads her to look for her friend at night. Finding her in the churchyard... Mina also spots a lurking figure stalking Lucy from the shadows. There, on our favourite seat, the silver light of the moon struck a half-reclining figure, snowy white. It seemed to me as though something dark stood behind the seat, where the white figure shone and bent over it. What it was, whether man or beast, I could not tell. I did not wait to catch another glance. The 13th and 14th of August, suffering from Count Dracula's bite, Lucy Westmer becomes increasingly frail and distracted. To help her recover, she and Mina spend all day reading and writing on the east cliff in view of the abbey, where in the half-light they think they see a stranger with eyes like burning flames. Between me and the moonlight flitted a great bat, coming and going in great whirling circles. Once or twice it came quite close, but was, I suppose, frightened at seeing me, and flitted away across the harbour towards the abbey. Just then the moonlight crept around an angle of the building and light fell on the window. There distinctly was Lucy with her head lying up against the side of the window sill, and her eyes shut. She was fast asleep and by her seated on the window sill was something that looked like a good sized bird. <laughs> Hello, so I'm back home now in exactly the spot where I started off this vlog. Um, I've had an absolutely brilliant weekend, um, so busy, so exciting, doing events that I've never done before, doing my first proper workshop in person, um, doing um, a book club the first time in person, um, things that I've done during Covid sort of virtually but not in real life with actual people. Um, and then obviously going to Whitby was absolutely amazing to be there. It's been a few years because of Covid and things and it's just one of those places where I feel really at home and I love it. It was great to do a signing at the bookshop um, and to chat to lots of lovely people. And I also finished Carmilla um, on the way home so I thought I'd give you an update about my thoughts. I think that 
I haven't read any other Sheridan Le Fanu books as I think I mentioned earlier in the vlog. I'm definitely going to check out more now because I absolutely loved his writing style. Um, I thought that it was very bold and I thought that um, even though he's obviously a male author and chose to write about female characters at that time period, it could have been a very sort of stereotypical account um, that kind of didn't give um, the women a lot of agency as they wouldn't have had at the time that this book was written. And actually he wrote kind of bold, strong will characters. Um, Carmilla is exceedingly intriguing. I'm not going to tell you too much about her because I just want you to read it because it's really fun. Um, I thought it was very bold to tackle a sapphic relationship. I think that some reviews I've seen um, have said that it, it didn't kind of go as intense a relationship as they expected, but it, it kind of went more intense than I expected, given the time period in which the book was written. Um, because I think that any kind of relationship described in books from over 100 years ago um, tend to kind of hold back a little bit in the descriptions of the uh, of the relationships, so we say. Um, but I thought that this book tackled that really well. It tackled how Laura felt um, as a woman in that time period, kind of having feelings towards another woman. In some cases, not hugely explicit, but you could read the intention of what she was trying to say. Um, the only bit of the book that I found slightly weaker um, was the ending and I won't spoil it but I did just feel that some of the attitudes of the time kind of prevailed and instead of um being massively bold I think the ending sort of played into expectations a little bit um but I think that that's that sort of modern critique of a book that was written a long time ago like in the late mid, mid to late 1800s think about 1875 or something like that um I just think I think it is quite incredible very bold forward thinking um, well written and I kind of wanted it to be longer but I also enjoyed the length of it that it just felt like I could sit and read I think I read it in three or four sittings um, and I did a little video update after each one so hopefully you could see my thoughts as I went along but I really enjoyed that reading vlog I do find them quite difficult because I'm not that used to doing it yet and the fact that I kind of do a bit of filming do another bit of filming um, so whether there'll be a thread when all this is put together, um, I have no idea, but I hope you enjoy it. Um, I certainly had a great weekend. It was a really good experience for me as an author. I love taking my little boy to Whitby for the first time. He enjoyed tearing around the abbey and sort of staggering up the steps and um, 199 steps, insisting that he could do it for part of it and then that I carry him for the rest of it. Um, it was really, really great. I also um, took a necklace back that I bought in Whitby a few years ago, Whitby Jet One, that had unfortunately got broken and the shop were really kindly going to fix it for me um, and send it back. So it just was nice all in all. I feel like I'll have that nice memento when the necklace gets posted back next week of a really lovely weekend. So thank you for staying with me to the end. I do appreciate it. I'd love to hear in the comments if you read Carmilla, what did you think of it? Did you enjoy it as much as Dracula? I'd say on balance I probably slightly enjoy Dracula more but it's possibly just because I've read it so many times. I've watched so many movie and TV adaptations of it. Um, I think it's just ingrained in who I am at this point and particularly um, the Bram Stoker's Dracula that Winona Ryder in is just one of my favourite things to watch. Um, so yeah, I think I'd maybe need to read Carmela a few more times but I certainly think the fact that I even had any doubt as to whether I could love it as much as Dracula shows how much I really did enjoy it. So thanks so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe um, if you like what you've seen so far um, and thank you to everybody who's supporting me on this journey. Thanks a lot. <laughs>